Sally YouTube, I'm very excited to talk to you about today's video topic, which are the crazy, strange sounds that French people make in the French language and a couple of gestures as well, because, you know, learning a language is quite a holistic experience, right? Yes, there's the actual words and the grammar and all of that kind of stuff, but there's also the way you say it, the tone, the sounds, the gestures, the whole kind of package that goes with it to sound French. And I really wanted to talk to you today about some of the noises that I notice and the sounds that they make that really made me be like, what was that? So we're going to jump into that in today's video. Ah, oh, stupid COVID. I'm missing France a lot at the moment. So yeah, we're really, really wanting to come back as soon as possible. It's really tricky with flights and the quarantine back in New Zealand. So we're just hoping that those restrictions lift as soon as possible so we can get back on the ground in France, see friends and family, and of course, speak in the wonderful French language. But just before we jump into all of the strange sounds that French people are making, I wanted to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Video, Lingoda, who have a very cool challenge that I'd like to talk to you guys about, which I've never spoken about on this channel. It's called the Lingoda Team Challenge. And it's actually a really cool challenge that you can do as a group, as a team, like ultimate accountability and motivation. By signing up, you can win some amazing prizes. And by doing the challenge, you contribute to the Lingoda Scholarship, which is a super good cause because it allows people in need or people who have been affected by COVID and are unable to learn a language to do so. So how it works is you can pick your language. So you can choose English, Business English, Spanish, German, or French. And you either do the seven week challenge. So that is three classes a week for seven weeks. So 21 classes in total or the super challenge, which is five classes per week for seven weeks. And so 35 classes in total. And even though you can register as an individual and as a team, I definitely recommend doing it as a team because that's when you can unlock the big prizes because they rank the top 10 teams in the challenge. And that's how you can win the trips abroad and the extra lessons and all of that kind of stuff. Although in saying that, even if you sign up as an individual or a team regardless, the equivalent of 20% of your classes will be donated to the Lingoda Language Scholarship Program to gift to those who are in need. So it's a super cool course as well. So the advantage of doing it as a team, of course, is to win prizes. And if you win first place as a team, so a team is between two and 12 people, you get a weekend trip to either London, Paris, Vienna, or Madrid, which is amazing. And you can also get up to 200 free classes if you are in the top 10 teams as well. So to qualify to go into the prize drawer, you need to attend a 100% of the league's classes, take no more than one class per day, and attend the same number of classes per week. So either the three classes per week or the five classes per week, depending on the package that you signed up for. And all of the teams that meet these conditions go into the prize draw. And so if you're thinking about becoming a captain of a team and recruiting members, keep this in mind as well, that you'll also get 10 euros cash back for each member that you recruit, up to a maximum of 11 people. So you can get up to 110 euros cash back as well, depending on how many friends you're able to convince to do the challenge with you. Just so you know, as a team, you can be from different countries, you can be at different levels, and you can be learning different languages as well. So if you guys are keen, I will leave a link below where you can read all about it, learn more, and learn about what's involved exactly. But this is what you need to know. All team members need to be signed up by November 1st at the absolute latest, and you've got 63 days after purchase or until the 20th of December to complete the seven week challenge. As you guys know, I use Lingoda to get to level B2 in French and I'm so glad I did. It was completely online, available 24-7, very, very flexible, native speaking, qualified professors. It was just really, really easy and I recommend it to everyone. So get out there, go check out Lingoda on Instagram as well just to learn a little bit more about them and hear some success stories if you like. Otherwise, click the link below, check it out and go and smash those language goals. Cool, so with all that said and done, let's check out some of these sounds that French people be making. Okay, so any non-French speaker who's been to France has heard the sound and it's probably been one of the first things that you've noticed and it's the famous French thinking sound which is buh. This can be used when they're filling a gap, right? They're thinking they're about to respond. So for example, buh way or buh je sais pas. So it's really this like buh that fills up the space while they're just gaining a little bit of time to think. So in that example, I just said, mm, yes, mm, I don't know. But I think the most classic use of this is just the buh what? Buh what? 
Now this next sound took me a little bit longer to discover, but I was shook when I heard it for the first time. I thought that my manager at the time was having an asthma attack. So it's like the gaspy breath in, and it's usually in the form of a we, of a yes. It's kind of like, what? What? Like that, like a gasp in for air. I mean, it doesn't have to be at all, but it can also be associated with smoking, right? So it's like quite common like for someone to be taking a drag on their smoke and be like, what? You know, like in response. And this particular way, we, very much means me too, or I agree. You can be, you know, saying something and making a point, let's say, or just saying, oh, it's really unfair, la la la. You'll be making some kind of statement and the oh, means like, yeah, you're right, or me too, like, I definitely agree, you know, like, oh, like a strong, <laughs> strong agreement. And I remember the first few times I heard that, I was like, what's happening? Like, what was that? Like, what, what was what was that gaspy way? And sometimes it doesn't even need to have the wee sound to it. It can just be like, oh, like a little bit of a gasp as well. That is a sound, let me know if you've heard that before and it made you think, what just happened? <laughs> like I did with me. Or if you're French, let us know a little bit in the comments, like in which circumstances you would use a we versus a what? The next sound is super cute and it sounds like the French person is saying up, but it's actually hop, H-O-P, and it's usually used with children. So for example, if you pick your child up, you might say, elle est up, or if they're going up the stairs, like, okay, like, on va monter les escaliers, elle est up. It's sort of related to, to the concept of up, but it's actually spelled hop, H-O-P. I've also seen it being used when you pass something or like give someone something, like you're sort of, I don't know, giving them some bread across the table or something and you're like, allez up, like kind of like that as well. So there's a sort of like up sound definitely in the French language. So this is less of a sound, I mean it's a word, it's it's one that we learn when we're learning French but it's definitely a thing and it's boof. So definitely, I mean when combined with a shrug of the shoulders it's very much like I don't know, I don't care, pretty neutral about it, pretty, feel pretty mm, meh, you know? So it's like boof, uh, boof, uh, boof. I think if you do it with the shrug and the pout for added effect, it's definitely like level French 10 out of 10, you know, like mm, boof, mm, boof. Now the next sound, and again it's more a word, it's more the oh la la, okay, but there's a way that French people can say it where it just sort of like, it becomes a sound, right? It's like oh la la, where it's kind of like you're exasperated like oh la la, or when you're thinking like oh that's bad, and there's a, the hand gesture that goes with that as well, which is like this, so if you're like oh la la la, or like oh la 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 la, oh la la, or like, oh la, oh, Ooh la la, ooh that's bad, ooh. So that's definitely a thing, but there's also that sort of like, ugh, exasperated, like oh my god kind of thing, which is like, ooh la la la. Now this sound comes up a lot when you're annoyed and it's the pfft. So the pfft is very much like a P -F 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 -F, like pfft. The most common situation that I saw it used in was when you were saying that someone was quite annoying. So it's like, pfft, t'es chiant like you're annoying to a And so if you say like with it, it adds it in. It's sort of like, Pff. it adds to it, right? It's like to a chant toi. Now the next one is this really sort of, it's hard for me to do because it's this quite guttural sound in the throat. If I were to spell it, it would be like R O H H H H H. And it's almost like a low growl. And it's the same kind of thing when you're annoyed by something. It's kind of like, um, it's really hard for me to do. It's like, it's definitely a French speaker thing. And it's like, oh. And you can also add to it by being like, oh, at the same time, like, oh, like, oh. It's sort of like that, but more like, oh, in there, you know, like, oh, oh la la. You can also add in like, oh la 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 la. Like adding oh la la to it also works as well. So it's like, oh, to chien, oh, c'est pénible. It's really annoying. It's, yeah, but there's kind of the two things. It's kind of like the and then there's a with the sound as well. So I don't know what you'd call that. Maybe like a growl. I don't know. If you're French watching this, let us know if there's any particular name to describe this phenomenon. The next one is the classic like raspberry farty sound with the lips, which comes with I don't know. So it's also good to do it with a gesture, so a bit of a shrug as well, and be like, 
spa. Like, I don't know. So by pursing your lips, making a bit of a fart sound, that means, I don't know. Don't ask me. Don't ask me, I'm just a French. The next sound that French people make are when they are engaged in what you're saying and they want to let you know that they're still listening. So they'll be like, mm, 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 mm. It's very much like a mm, 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 <laughs> mm. So that's their sound instead of um, like, uh-huh, uh-huh, or yeah, sure, uh-huh. The, their equivalent would be like, mm, 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 like that. Now the next one is another sound when you're annoyed and it's quite similar to the oh, but it's slightly different sound so it's maybe when something's like not working, the TV's not turning on or the Wi-Fi's not working, something like that and it's just a simple oh. so it's like oh merde le wifi ne marche plus oh. it's kind of like that as well so yeah another growl type sound as well just to throw it in there it's like they're using the same area of the throat that does the french r like that air that in there it's around that kind of area of the throat as well the next sound i find super cute and it is when french people are kind of ticking things off a to-do list most often is when i've seen it and it's kind of like you're sort of like looking at it and you're like okay tuck 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 like dun 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 or if a french person sort of gives you something to sign that's sort of like okay tuck like allez tuck and by tuck it means like you've got something to do you need to sign now so you take the action so yeah it's definitely to do with taking actions right it's sort of like okay tuck 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 and yeah that would be spelt t-a-k 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 the next sound again it's in the language but it's very much a sound to listen for and it's uh um, so it's H-E-I-N. And this can be used in a few ways. So in New Zealand, when we seek agreement, we use the word A. So we're like, oh yeah, it's good A. Or that was really nice of him, A. Eh? And when we say A, we want someone to respond and agree with us. And the French can use un in the same way. Like, c'est bien. Like, it's good, wouldn't you agree? Or someone's kind of making a point and they're like, C'est vrai, hein? like it's true, right? You know, so it's that kind of seeking agreement. So that uh, that you're listening for, or it can also be used at the front of a sentence, sort of like, like what or huh, if you haven't heard someone correctly. So you might be like, uh, qu'est-ce que tu dit? Like what, what did you say? So you can also use it in that sense as well. Another kind of raspberry farty sound and a gesture to go with it as well is another way to say or signal, I don't know. So it's when you like puff up your cheeks and you kind of pop them like, So that would be like, I don't know, I've got an idea. And the next sound, I mean, you can take the Frenchman or the French woman out of France, but you cannot take the sound out of the French person. <laughs> and that is the sound that they make when they hurt themselves, which is, aïe. Especially if it's a big one, it's like, aïe. <laughs> so I means ouch. And no matter how fluent my French husband is, it doesn't matter that we speak in English in our relationship. I mean, if he stubs his toe, it's still aïe. <laughs> Actually, one last thing I wanted to add, you know the word merde, like shit in French, right? We all, it's like one of the first words we learn in French, maybe even just after bonjour. So there's a sound that you can add to that to really emphasize it as well. And this is when you really drag out the de. So there's merde, which is shit. And then there's the next level, which is merde. Oh merde. And so when you add that de effect to the merde, it definitely like 10 X's the impact. Like you either hurt yourself, you're really pissed off, or you've just had that moment of realization where you're like, Merde! J'ai oublié mon passeport! So I hope that you guys enjoyed this foray into French sounds and gestures. Let me know what your favorite one is down below. Mine is definitely the <gasps> That was really quite a sound when I first heard it for the same time. <gasps> So yeah, let me know what your favorite was down below or if there's any other funny sounds or gestures that you've picked up on as well in the French language. If you're French yourself, can you just explain a little bit about these sounds that you guys are making? And otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm actually going to be making more and more videos on the Not Even French channel now that my business is underway and I'm coming out of the crazy first year of business period. I'm coming back and I'm gonna be creating more and more content on the channel. So definitely let me know what you want to see down below and otherwise I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao, a bientôt!